Good afternoon, my name is Tukilio Kansiranga. I am from Malawi and I'm the head of communications unit for the African Court. Thank you. Okay. Well, President, again, welcome to Liberia. On my own behalf and on behalf of uh, on behalf of the African Court and Human and People's Rights, I would like to sincerely thank you, Honorable Speaker, for accepting our request for a public visit and according us time for this uh, briefing today. Um, I will take this opportunity uh, to talk briefly about the status of the African Court and Human and People's Rights. Um, called first the establishment of the court. And uh, the African Court on Human and People's Rights is, is established by which of Article 1 of the Protocol, the African Charter on Human and People's Rights, on the establishment of the African Court on Human and People's Rights, which we normally um, it is a, the protocol or the court protocol. The protocol was adopted in June 1988 in Ouagadougou, Burkina Faso, and uh, entered into force on 25th of January 2004. Uh, the African Court is a continental court with the mandate to enhance the judicial protection of human and people's rights in, in Africa. Um, furthermore, pursuant to Article 2 of the same uh, court protocol, the court complements the work of the African Commission on Human and People's Rights. It uh, complements on its protective mandate, because as you know, the Commission has two mandates, protection and promotion of human rights in Africa. The court 
what was Operation Life in June, July 2006? And has it a temporary seat? Um, it, it has now permanent seat in, uh, in uh, Russia, Tanzania. Uh, before that, it had its uh, temporary seat in Addis Ababa until when it moved to Addis Ababa, Tanzania, its permanent uh, seat. To date, uh, the court has stated four out of 55 member states. Uh, only 34 member states have ratified the protocol establishing the court. And I must uh, take this point out that the Republic of Liberia is yet to ratify the protocol, even though it signed the protocol in 1998. And in under Article 13, clause of 6 of the protocol, at the time of ratification or after ratification, the member state or the state party has to deposit a separate declaration. Um, that's just to, sh to, to, to show the acceptance of the court and allow individuals and NGOs of that particular member state to direct access the service of the African court. Currently, only eight out of 34 member states which have ratified the protocol have deposited the declaration. And uh, these eight uh, member states, as I mentioned, is Burkina Faso, Mali, the Gambia, Ghana, Guinea-Bissau, Malawi, Niger, and Tunisia. The court has two jurisdictions. The court exercises two types of jurisdiction, that being contentious and advisory jurisdiction. In its contentious jurisdiction, to extend to the to all cases which are, have been submitted before the court uh, concerning interpretation and application of the African Charter, the protocol establishing the court, or any other international instrument which um, uh, is relevant to human rights and the member state the member state concern has ratified. In the exercise of its advisory jurisdiction, the court provides an advisory opinion on any legal matter relating to the charter or any legal relevant human rights instrument, provided that the subject matter is not related to matter being examined by the African Court of Human, African Commission of Human Rights. Our court is composed of 11 judges who are national, nationals of member states of the African Union, which have ratified the protocol. And upon nomination by their respective states, the judges of the court are elected in their individual capacities. And the judges are elected for a term of six years, renewable ones, and not necessarily They elect among themselves the president of the court as well as the vice president, who are supposed to serve for two years' term, renewable ones. And uh, according to our rules, we have uh, taken into consideration the issue of gender parity, where the president is a female judge, yeah. the vice president has to be a male judge, and the uh, Vice versa. That's why you can see I'm here as the president <coughs> and my colleague as the vice president. Um, the president of the court uh, resides and works full time at the seat of the court, while other 10 judges, they work on part time basis. They just come during the session. And the court holds four ordinary sessions uh, per annum, and uh, all holds extraordinary sessions where it is necessary and where the resources allow to do so. 
the session I usually held at the seat of the court, that means in Arusha, Tanzania, uh, but can also be held in any other member states of the African Union when that member state is ready to host the court for that particular session. And we are looking forward to being hosted by Liberia any time soon. Statistics on the cases before the court. To date, the court has received 344 cases in contentious matters and 15 in a in request for advisory opinion. Um, it has delivered over 406 decisions including three, including 237 judgments, 15 rulings and advisory opinion, and 154 orders, which according to our rules, they're all tenders court decisions. We have 130 cases pending before the court to date. Um, despite um, all the successes, since the mother court was established, which is uh, 17 years now, we have major challenges which we are facing. Um, and those um, several challenges uh, of the person during um, in the course of our work, and uh, they include low rate of ratification of the protocol, as I say, out of 65 or 134 member states. And um, restricted access to the court by individuals and non governmental organizations. As I also I said earlier, that we only have eight member states of the African Union which have allowed individuals and NGOs to access directly to the service of the African Court. And this we consider that to be a big challenge for the court because doesn't um, reflect the objective of establishing that court, which was to serve all Africans and not just African, African, Africans from different member states. Another challenge is lack of awareness of the court among African citizens. The court remains largely unknown across Africa. Um, and um, that's why, uh, Honorable Speaker, in our sensitization visits, uh, we have planned also to have uh, some seminar with uh, uh, civil society, um, uh, other stakeholders, academia, and um, any, any other stakeholders from different institutions who, who will attend just to increase awareness Another challenge is low rate of compliance or non-compliance with uh, uh, court decisions. That has been uh, another challenge. We have been making some decisions which uh, the state confirms they don't comply with it. And uh, legally, um, I'm sure some of you, if you need to be a lawyer, you know, there's no, you know, if you make a decision as a court and then the one who is supposed to benefit out of that, the fruit of that decision is not beneficial, it's as if you haven't made a decision. So this is a very big uh, challenge for us. Uh, another challenge is an adequate human and financial resource. And on this point, I uh, would uh, urge and request Honorable Speaker and the House of Representatives uh, to be one of uh, our ambassadors to urge the Republic of Liberia to support the court on this point, especially on financial during our budget. Um, Honorable Speaker, on the role of the uh, House of Representatives <coughs> of the Republic of Liberia versus the African Court, I would say that the House of Representatives has a central role in ensuring that all authorities, whether public or private, respect the Constitution. 
and that the Senate, the state complies with the obligation, its primary obligation and the international human rights uh, treaties that it has ratified. In this regard, the House of Representatives shares a common purpose with the African Court on human and legal rights, that is the protection of human rights. The Republic of Nigeria has not yet ratified the protocol, as I said, as a consequence thereof. It has not because of the declaration. The result is that the various nations and individuals, um, non governmental organizations, <coughs> cannot file their cases directly to the court, as I say. Uh, that, you know, doesn't um, sound well because it defeats the purpose. So the ratification of the court protocol and the provision of declaration greatly facilitates complementarity between the Liberian mission systems and the African court in the protection of human rights. Given this background, uh, honorable people we have to request that uh, you as an individual and all uh, members of the House of Representatives uh, play a key role in advocating for the executive to take steps to ratify the court's protocol and because of the declaration and the article 34 that creates the court's protocol. The House of Representatives is further requested to advocate for the utilization of the court's advisory jurisdiction as this is a non contentious way of clarifying the provisions of human rights instruments in the Liberian as a part of the African Union, <coughs> which would not only benefit Liberians, but would benefit um, African continent as a whole. In conclusion, Honorable Speaker, let me end by thanking you once again and, um, for the time taken uh, for this purpose. We know that we can come to a company to be a good ambassador for the African Court of Human Rights. Thank you very much. You're welcome, our President. Thank you so much. Uh, while you were speaking, Honorable Nikia Kolobar joined us. Uh, he's the co chair on national security. Um, we appreciate your statement. Ask first if any one of my colleagues have any questions. Can you speak for Can you speak for Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. <coughs> uh, President and delegate, we want to say thank you for this interaction. And we actually pick up a lot of things on the remarks. You know, one of them has to do with the ratification of the code of the like That will give us the opportunity to be able to find a way to for the code. Which I know the speaker you know, has already taken that into consideration. And I know we will start looking for that direction. But we are available from the legislative standpoint, especially from the committee on judiciary, you know, that to say you'll be having broad based consultation doing awareness with stakeholders and also universities and other institutions. We from the legislature will also be a part of that. We are available for us to work you through so that we all can be a part of the presentation. <coughs> thank you for coming. Thank you for the opportunity for us to answer this action. Okay, Madam my, my President, um, as the Chairman of Judiciary said, um, this is an eye opener for us. You know, we go through numerous legislations every year. Uh, if at the time the the protocol was sent for ratification. It did not get ratified. Uh, I think somewhere in there we lost the, the, uh, the will to put it back on the su successive uh, legislature. So we will find out from the mutual point of where we are on that. Uh, we will bring it back on the floor for ratification. Uh, social justice and human rights, I think that we subscribe to, subscribe to this legislature and we will do everything we can 
to play our part to be not only the 35th member to, to ratify, but to also encourage some of our other partners to do the same. Uh, we are quite aware of the enforcement of judgment, uh, we of your, all of your primary <coughs> issues, um, but that is across the board in all such courts, uh, and sometimes even national. So uh, we take it on an advisement, we assure you that Liberia is not a party yet, we will be a party in the shortest possible time. Yeah, hello. The Minister of Justice is here, right? Yes. Yes. Have you people have found out a focal person? I'm sorry? We just get the information for the appointment of focal person in the location. Okay. Well, well, Thomas will follow up with you. And then we will try to do that. Okay. <coughs> I will send you my contact. I don't even have a card. <coughs> okay. How long are you in Liberia? So that's how I end up here with the engagement from the Africa court delegation that have come to have interaction with the Honorable House of Representatives headed by the Speaker of the Legislature. My name is Amos. Thank you so much. Bye bye.